in treating the hypothermic patient, one must of course start with the ABCs of first aid, checking for an open airway, breathing, pulse, and evidence of bleeding. Then make sure the patient does not have other injuries, such as fractures or wounds. The hypothermic patient's primary problem is heat loss, so treatment should be focused on preventing further cooling and restoring heat. Well, the first thing you need to remember in a hypothermic patient is to treat them gently. The major risk for someone who is cold, whose heart is cold, whose body is cold, is going into cardiac arrest because the hypothermic heart is much more prone to going into cardiac arrest than a person whose heart is at normal body temperature. What this means is when you deal with a hypothermic patient, you have to treat them gently. You have to avoid roughly handling them. And that includes not having your hypothermic patient walk or climb up a ladder. So if you can, you must assist the hypothermic patient, carry them in a horizontal position to a position of safety, hopefully out of the cold environment. It's important to remember to prevent further loss of body heat, either through direct cooling or exposure to more cold water or to cold air and wind from wind chill or from evaporative cooling. When water evaporates from your skin, it continues to rob heat from your body. So it's important then to remove the patient's wet clothes gently, usually by cutting it off with a knife or scissors, and then wrapping that patient in something that prevents evaporation, what we call vapor barrier clothing. And it doesn't have to be an expensive or specially designed garment. It could be something as simple as a tarp or even large garbage bags wrapped around the patient to prevent heat from evaporating and causing that patient's temperature to get colder. So are you still with us? People often ask the question, should you give the hypothermic patient warm fluids to drink or food to eat? And the answer is it depends on how conscious they are. It depends on their level of hypothermia. Now a mildly hypothermic patient who's fully conscious and can talk to you and is vigorously shivering and most importantly has a good cough reflex and swallow reflex, there's no problem at all giving them warm fluids to drink or something to eat to give them some calories with which to shiver. Shivering is a very important rewarming mechanism and you want that patient to shiver as much as they can. But if the patient is moderately hypothermic or severely hypothermic and is either unconscious or has slurred speech or other indications of an altered mental status, do not give them anything to eat or drink because they then run the risk of breathing in that fluid or food and choking on it, which will create a whole other problem other than just rewarming them from hypothermia. Once you've had the hypothermic patient stabilized, it's important to get them to a hospital for definitive treatment and rewarming. We hope that this program has helped you to better understand the phenomena of cold water immersion. And if you've learned anything, we hope it's these four things. One, always wear your life jacket or PFD. Two, anyone can end up in cold water. Three, cold water can kill you. And four, with proper training and preparation, you can survive cold water immersion, or better yet, prevent this potentially fatal experience in the first place. Are you guys ready to go?